Hi, welcome to lesson five in the Encore Music Notation software tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to show you two basic things, and I'll show you how they can relate to each other. The first thing is measure numbers, so I'll show you how to put measure numbers on your score. And the second one is called linear view, and I think that that'll help you when you are doing data entry of the notes onto your score. So let's take a look at measure numbers. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll make this score a little bit larger, so I'm going to come over here to just to the right of the magnifying glass. And I'll go to where it says page width. And so now I have something that's a little bit wider. So this is a, a score that I've already typed in. Um, you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so that's a very familiar piece, of course. Um, so like what I'd like to show you is how measure numbers work. So if we come over here to where it says measures, and there are quite a few options here. We go down to where it says measure numbers. Then a window pops open and there are quite a few options here and I'll explain each one of them. The first box that you add at the top is something that says add measures. And if you check that box, then you have the option of having the measures every so many measures. So here it says every one measure. Or you can have the measures appear at the beginning of each system. So they would be on the left-hand side of each line in the, in the score. Um, by the way, you can change this at any time. You can change measure numbers. You can add them. You can remove them at any time. So you have a good, uh, good flexibility here. So then there's another box that you can check down here. It says start with the first measure. And so you have the ability then to have the measure number appear at the first measure. If you don't check that then it will start with whatever the option is up here. So it would be each system or every so many measures. So it depends on what you want to do there. Then uh, you have the option of saying that the first bar could be a pickup bar. So if you have something less than the full number of beats in the measure, then you can set that up to be a measure number with a pickup bar. I'll talk more about pickup bars in a future tutorial. So I'm just going to leave that blank for a second. Um, and then you can have the measure numbers enclosed in a box. So the box would appear after that. You know, I think we should just take a look at this. So let's let's take a look at a couple of these things. First thing will be add numbers every one measure, and I'll say OK. And so there we have the measures are appearing every, every measure. So you can see how they appear uh, above the line at the beginning of the line. Actually, there was a shortcut on measure numbers. Let's take a look at it and see what it is. It's measures, measure numbers, and the, con the shortcut is Control, Alt, and N. So we could use that if we want to to get to here to this box. Then a couple of other things. There's a font selection thing. So if you want to uh, select a font for the measure numbers, you have the option of doing that. So again, just like the other font characteristics, you can do fonts anywhere where there's text on the score. I'm not going to do it there. Um, you have now the option down here of placing the measure numbers above the staff or below the staff. So if you want to do below the staff, you can do that. I'll show you how that works. It would then appear below the staff. So depending on where you want to have the measures, that's fine. So Control alt n takes me back to the measure number dialog, and I can then look at this. So let's see how I want to set this up. I want to do measure numbers every one measure, start with the first measure, and put them above the staff zero spaces above the staff, so you have the option of keeping them real close to the staff or to move them a little bit higher than that. That's up to you what you want to do. So I'll keep it just real close and we'll get what we want here. So those are the measure numbers that I want to deal with uh, for this particular example or demonstration, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So now the thing to point out is that this score, because of its length, and because of the size that I have it, if I want to make any kind of editing on this score, I have to scroll down. So I'm using the scroll wheel on the mouse just to scroll down to look at that, or I can scroll back up. I don't get to see the whole score in front of me unless I do something like this where I can go to where it says actual size. Now I can see the whole score, but it becomes a little more difficult to do data entry because everything's so small. So I have, if I go back to the fit width size. Uh, I have now something the width or the size that I want to deal with. Um, but it, like I said, it's something that is a little more inconvenient because I have to scroll up and down. That's where the second major thing comes into play that, that I want to show you. 
and it's something called linear view. And if you up here to where it says view, and then down here to where it says linear view, and notice there that there's a shortcut that's control Y. If I press that, then what has happened now is that the score becomes something linear that goes as far to the right side as the length of the score. And if you use the scroll wheel on the mouse, you can just keep scrolling out to the end of the score. Notice that I have measure numbers in here, and the, the reason I put those there is now I know when I'm scrolling back and forth, I know what measure I'm using just by, by looking at it. So control Y, you can turn it on or off. So if I press control Y, it goes back to the regular score view. If I press control Y again, it goes back to linear view. So I find linear view to be very, very helpful when I'm entering notes into the score. I'm of the opinion that the first thing you should do is get the notes on the score, and then when you're done, then bring it back to here and add whatever other elements you want to to the score, add some text or some uh, dynamic markings, or whatever you want to have added to the score. But I think linear view is one of those things that can be very, very useful when you are doing data entry. And as I said, it makes it a lot of sense to have the measure numbers there because that way you can find out where you are. So that's, uh, that's it for this lesson. It's a short lesson, but I wanted to show you just those two things, and hopefully it'll be very helpful to you as you go along. There are other lessons here in this tutorial series, so if you want to find them, you can take a look at my webpage, which is listed here. And if you find, want to find out more about Encore, you can go to the Passport Music Software website, which is also listed here. I'll see you in the next lesson.